when we look at commercial planes, they have more or less evolved into aircraft of a certain shape, be it Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, Bombardier, or many others. The tube and wing configuration has prevailed when it comes to large civilian airliners. And the reasons are not to do with having the highest aerodynamic efficiency, but more about practicality and a design that is production friendly. Similarly, if we look at the emerging eVTOL aircraft, and in particular those meant to be used as an air taxi, we are witnessing flying machines of a very specific shape. In this video, we are going to explore the common design features that define the outlook of the upcoming eVTOL aircraft. So let's begin. Even a cursory look at the 5-seater eVTOLs like Joby Aviation's S4, Vertical Aerospace's VAX4, the maker by Archer, Hyundai's SA-1 and Beta Aviation's Alaya 250 will reveal common design elements. All of them are multi-propulsors, they have high gull wing configuration, the presence of a V-tail is also a common feature, and barring the Alaya, all of them have 5-bladed tilt rotors. For the ease of reference, let's call this the standard eVTOL design. All of the mentioned aircraft have a maximum takeoff weight in the range of 2100 kilograms to 2800 kilograms and have a payload capacity of 400 to 550 kilograms. The range is between 80 to 150 miles and the top speed is between 150 to 200 miles per hour. Note the difference in range in between these aircraft is mainly because of the different amount of battery energy kept as reserve. The lift to drag ratio of these standard eVTOL aircraft is in the range of 12 to 18. Now there are other aircraft too in the A-Taxi eVTOL category which differ only slightly. For instance there is the ASX Mobi 1 which is different because it has tilt wings instead of tilt rotors but all the other specs are similar. Likewise we have the over air butterfly that instead of two or more propulsors per wing just has one large rotor on each wing and has two propulsors on the V-tail. Another aircraft worth mentioning here is the Embraer X, which is different from the rest in more than one aspect. The Embraer X has a high wing and a V-tail, but also has a ventral fin. It utilizes ducted fans instead of open propellers and has a canard wing configuration which distinguishes it from others in its category. However, it has similar specs of range, top speed, and payload. So why is it that eVTOLs are converging towards one particular shape and size? What are the aerodynamic advantages of the common features of these aircraft? Let's address these questions one by one. We will first look at the size and capacity. It is understandable that size, empty weight of the aircraft and the payload capacity are all limited by the energy density of the battery. A bigger size or a higher payload capacity in eVTOL would require a more voluminous aircraft which in turn would mean not just more weight but much more weight. Note that as the aircraft scale is increased, the weight increases cubically or in other words, if we double the size of the aircraft, we increase its weight by 8 times. We can indeed make an aircraft that is larger and is powered up by battery, but it wouldn't be able to go the distance. Even in their current size, the range for most EV tolls is around 100 miles. We can try to pack in as much battery as we can, but optimization studies have shown that the battery should never make up more than two-thirds of the total weight of the aircraft. A higher weight will only decrease the endurance, leading to useless weight, overpowered systems, and higher discharge rates. For most eVTOL aircraft today, the battery weight is at max one-third of the aircraft weight. Now, there is a very simple equation based on first principles to calculate the range of any eVTOL aircraft, which can be used even by people not skilled in maths or engineering. The equation says that the range is the product of four factors. The first is the battery energy available for cruise or forward propulsion in joules. The second is the propulsive efficiency represented by nu. The third is the lift to drag ratio of the aircraft. 
and the final is the inverse of the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft in newtons. The ease of use of this equation can be demonstrated by an example. Let's say we want to calculate the range of Maker by Archer. The Maker has 37 kilowatt hour of battery energy available for cruise, which can be converted into joules just by multiplying the value by 3.6 million or 60 times 60 times 1000. For propulsive efficiency, a conservative value of 0.8 can be used. The lift to drag ratio of the maker is 12. The maximum takeoff mass of the aircraft is 1508 kilograms, meaning the weight is 9.8 times 1508 or 14,793 newtons. The input of these four values in the equation gives the range to be 86,440 meters or 86 kilometers, as simple as that. Archer have mentioned on their website that 37 kilowatt hour capacity is the portion of the battery pack energy reserved for cruise. The total battery pack size is 75 kilowatt hour, so approximately 50% of that portion is used during cruise. 12% is kept for hovering mode, 20% of the energy has been allocated to reserve, while 15% accounts for the capacity fade over time and 3% is deemed inaccessible so as not to drain the battery completely to increase the cycle life. These percentages are more or less the same for standard EV tolls that we are exploring. The percentage energy consumption for other type of EV toll can vary. For instance, on a spectrum, on one end we can have the Lilium that is optimized for flight during cruise mode and on the other end we can have Jaunt Aviation's Rosa which is more optimized for hover. So the 12% energy designated for hovering for a standard shape EV toll can be as low as 5% for the Rosa and can be as high as 18% for Lilium. The assumption here for Lilium jet is that the battery weight is one third of the total weight of the aircraft. It would be interesting at this point to look at the conventional tilt rotors and tilt wings that run on jet fuel. There are two aircraft that are worth mentioning because of their relatively light weight. One was the Canadair CL84 Dynavert tilt wing with a maximum takeoff weight of 5710 kilograms for VTOL and empty weight of 3818 kilograms. There's also the Augusta Westland AW609, a tilt rotor with a maximum takeoff weight of 7620 kilograms and an empty weight of 4,765 kilograms. The range for these aircraft is 421 miles and 863 miles respectively. So the conventional VTOL aircraft are almost two times heavier than the standard eVTOL designs and have four to eight times more range. The most successful conventional VTOL is the V-22 Osprey that has an empty weight of 14,432 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of 21,546 kilograms and a range of 1,012 miles. This large size is all down to the high energy density of jet fuel. So this makes it clear that the size in the standard EV toll is limited by the energy capacity of the battery. And this brings us to the second common feature of the emerging EV tolls, that is the V-tail empennage. The V-tail not only has a lower weight compared to conventional stabilizer and fin empennage, but also has less wetted areas, so there is less induced and parasitic drag. The V-tail, however, does require a longer fuselage to avoid undesirable yawing effect referred to as snaking. Let's now look at the propellers. Another common theme that runs through the standard EV-tail design is the five-bladed propellers. The five blade props produce higher thrust for the same RPM compared to the three bladed propellers. This means that for a certain amount of thrust, the five bladed propellers can be spun slower which results in a lower tip speed and in turn lower noise. To reduce the noise signature further, anhedral tips are being used. These are the reasons that have resulted in Joby S4 to register 55 decibels while hovering Similarly, Archer have claimed that their aircraft maker 
also has a sound signature of just 45 decibels. Some of the EV tolls are using two motors to power a single propeller. This is done to provide a layer of redundancy in case of a motor failure. A more efficient solution, however, is the one used by ASX in their earlier aircraft, the Mobi 1 V3. They've used co-rotating propellers. A study has shown that by varying azimuthal spacing between the upper and lower rotor, the co-rotating rotor can perform better than even contra-rotating rotor. Therefore, if two motors per propulsor have to be kept to provide redundancy, then it would be more advantageous to use them for co- or counter-rotating propellers in the normal operation mode. The coaxial configuration not only reduces the noise level but can also lower the power consumption by up to 15%. So far, the tilt rotor has been the choice of most aircraft manufacturers. Only the Mobi 1 V3 by ASX and the Transcend Air VY400 have come up with tilt wing configuration. There are advantages of tilt wing over tilt rotor. For example, the downwash from the rotors is not apprehended by a horizontal wing as is the case in a tilt rotor configuration. Note that the Osprey loses 10% of its thrust because of the interference from the wing. The other advantage is the relatively quick transition from hovering to cruise. The CL-74 Dynavert, for instance, was able to take off vertically, then accelerate from zero airspeed to 100 knots or 115 miles per hour in just eight seconds. On the other hand, the tilt rotor has to build up speed and reach a point beyond the stall speed of the aircraft, after which the rotors can begin tilting down. The third advantage of a tilt wing is that a single tilting mechanism is required for the whole aircraft which reduces complexity rather than having one for each of the many rotors. The tilt wings have a stronger case for electric aircraft as the motors are much lighter compared to engines and so the tilting mechanism for tilt wing doesn't need to be as bulky. There are two disadvantages however for the tilt wing configuration. First is its susceptibility to gusts during hovering because of the large wing area. Although this problem can be alleviated by using Venetian blind wings, but that would add complexity to the design. The second disadvantage is that if the battery is stored in the wings, it will make the wings heavier and this would require a bulkier tilting mechanism. And this brings us nicely to our next design feature, that is the distributed battery pack system. A distributed battery pack system that is spread out is more advantageous than a single large centralized battery pack. It not only provides better weight distribution but also allows better heat removal due to larger exposed area and prevents thermal runaway propagation. The high gull wing configuration common in modern EV tolls is mainly to provide clearance from the rotors and ease of accessing the aircraft. The high wing configuration with batteries stored in the wings also allows a higher center of gravity, closer to the plane of the rotor. This gives better stability while hovering. So there we go, we have discussed the common features that have been the choice of so many upcoming eVTOL aircraft and hopefully provided the reason for the choice. So what do you think the best design should look like? Do let us know in the comment section. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.